But see, starting is one of the most valuable skills that you can actually have. Hey guys, I'm going to talk to you today about why to grow your own seeds, your own seedlings, your own transplants. Why do that? You know, today we can look around in our world knowing that we need to do something differently. But seed starting is one of the most valuable skills that you can actually have. We talk about skills, you know, carpentry and stuff like that. But this is a valuable skill because once you learn how to start growing seedlings, transplants, you save so much money. It's such a valuable skill because like at the big box store, right now you're paying $5 for six little plants. It doesn't cost that much when you buy your own seeds. Another point of why you should start learning how to do this skill is that you get to pick out the seeds that you want. Because at the big box stores, there might be beefsteaks or better boys or a uh, giant girl or whatever like that and that's what you got to pick from not counting those seeds have probably came from a different region a different state so they're growing in that area the seeds came from that area and so when you start your own seeds then you can start or seedlings and plants then you can start saving your own seeds but the thing of it is those plants go through a lot of transplant shock which stunts the production of your harvest you know seed starting is a very very good skill to learn when I first started it was intimidating to me and I actually started out using Dixie cups you see Dixie cups I've drilled little holes in the bottom of them and I still got those cups in case I want to step my plants up and I started out with that but you want to make a decision in the future the best interest of good quality stuff. These cells are here, 162 cells, and they came from Haas Tools, and I got five of them because I know I want all the trays and plants I can, um, trays and cells I can have to grow however many plants I want to plant, or maybe some are coming up, and now it's time to plant another set of seeds. But you want to invest in good quality. But then again, you got to start somewhere. And you have to excuse the sound. I'm in the greenhouse and the wind is crazy outside. But this cell right here, it actually came from Dollar General. Reduce, reduce. 25, 30 cents I paid for it. So yeah, I picked it up. Because I got lettuce growing in these cells right now because I don't need that many lettuce. And this works out great. So uh, you want to invest in to the, to, into a good quality stuff like lightings, um, mats. Uh, uh, heat mats, um, what else, uh, the trays, the cells, your containers, because once you make that investment, all you got left is, the, but be, is to do is to buy the seed starting mix here. And yes, you can make your own, but it's best to go ahead and buy it where this is very fine when I got a bag down here is not the one I would use to start my seed starting. Let's take a look at that. So this does say three in one sea sturdy mix. And I have moistened this because I always moisten my sea sturdy mix because it makes it so much easier to go into my trays, my cells, which I have plenty of seeds in the um but this right here it has a lot of sticks and it's 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 chopped up. It's it's really not good for starting seeds, even though it says that. This would be something that, like maybe you would want to put into a raised bed and that would definitely work or raising up a, a type of plant. Here is my seeds. This year I'm trying not to save seeds. I've learned how to save seeds. So once you start learning how to raise up your own transplants, then you're going to start thinking about saving seeds to save even more money. And so when it comes to seed saving, like tomatoes, they pollinate one another, the bees, they go to it. So you won't have the true uh, type of seed if you save the seeds. Like I got into the greenhouse, some tomato plants. These came up voluntarily from the, the worm castings and they have tomatoes onto them. And when I had a couple ripen, they were the most delicious tomatoes. They was meaty. I did save some of those seeds because I like to try it. Maybe 
maybe I'll have my own variety of seeds here on to the homestead. But all these plants in here have been grown from seeds. All that was in the garden has been raised up um, from a seed, uh, raised from seeds. And I've been eating off this broccoli and cauliflower and it has been totally super, super delicious. When you start learning how to do the seeds, raising up transplants, or raising up seedlings, then growing your own transplants, you control the plant. You control the timing of the plant. You control the health of the plant. And the plant is not, um, is not being going through a, a whole lot of shock. Um, buying those that are in the store, they're stressed. They're stressed down. They're, the roots are wrapping around. You know, it takes a while when you buy those type of plants at the store. And then once you transplant them into wherever you're going to transplant them at, then what's going to happen, those roots are all wrapped around. It's got to figure out, okay, which way do we go? They still want to wrap around. And then they, they finally figure out, okay, we, we're going to branch out into our new home, into our new soil. And it takes a while. It slows down your production. These are more tomatoes that came up voluntarily. So I'm going to grow them. And this is the lettuce. These are those Dollar General trays. And I'm using them to, to get me some lettuce plants to grow because I don't need that many of them. Plus, I've already got my 25, 30 cents into them. Here is another cell. It is a um, a foam type, like you, a cooler type um, foam insulation that some my cousin gave me. And I put onion um, seeds in here because I've got onions. I've raised these up from seed. And I got onions growing. And they look beautiful. So all these were, everything you see in, the, in this greenhouse has been raised up from a seed. These are strawberry seeds I planted yesterday. And I put saran wrap, or this is a six mil plastic, to help hold that moisture in to help these seeds to germinate. When you're growing your own transplants, you can see when they need watering, when they need fertilizing, when they need to be stepped up, or if they need to be stepped up. And they have minimum transplant shock. This one grew up from a seed. I have a video of how the frost and freeze dimension, it, it got hit on the side a little bit because I didn't have it cover, covered properly. But this is growing from a seed, and it's winter time. So now I've shown you the reasons why we should uh, start learning how to grow transplants, to grow seedlings, to grow our own food, to take a step at a time because it can be intimidating to begin with, but it really is it really is easier. And you know, the first time I did it, I didn't have all my plants to make it, not all of them, but I had a lot of plants that didn't make it, make it. And so the first time. And then the second time you do it, and the third time you just get better and better and better. So why should we start learning this type of skill? Well, we're going to be saving money. What if you can't get enough food at the grocery store? What if you can't get the food you want at the grocery store? You know, what if you know you want, you're limited on your money? And so these are another reason this popped into mind. You want to learn this skill so you can learn how to garden, so you can grow your own food and save money for you, you and your family to take that money and put it on something else. Yes, it can be intimidating, but trust me from the heart. Learn this type of skill. You'll be so amazed how easy it is. I'm going to take you over here to the sea starting tray table, sea starting tray, sale table, and show you. So, first of all, you want to make sure that your sea starting mix I always moisten mine on the inside, and you'll be surprised once you put some water in there how you check it later on, it's still dry. But it takes a while, so you, you want to make sure that your seed starting mix is wet all the way through, and so you'll have to keep watering it. And as long as you see that water standing on top of it, then you know it has not saturated that seed starting mix enough. You, me planting some of these seeds and show you how simple it is. And all you do is take your seed starting mix and you're going to sprinkle it in there and just push it around in there. But this is the, the time consuming part. And that's why I always wet my seed starting mix because it saves me time. 
and it's easier to get into these trays and then once I start wetting it I don't have I don't have my sea starting mix going floating out of my sails you see on that end it's, it's starting to go down but still holding the water once I see that this water is draining all the way through and not holding any water on top then I know it's pretty much saturated a lot of times I'll take one of my knives that I have out here and see this right here is going down that right there is still holding some water that's where I put the new sea starting mix before um, I made this uh, well, I made this video um, but anyways that right there is holding some water so that's why I moved this cell over here to go ahead and start getting this saturated but you know what I'm telling you the easiest way unless you're in a hurry is go ahead and fill these cells up wet your sea starting mix um, get it moist fill these trays up wet it down wet it another time wait overnight come out you know wet two or three times come out the next day and take a look at it, wet it again maybe two times and, and you'll be ready to go. You won't be sitting around waiting for this uh, seed starting mix to get ready to put your seeds in. So you pick out the, the tomato you want to grow. Maybe it's just celebrity. Celebrities do a excellent uh, growth. They put out a lot of um, fruit or some people call it vegetables. So let's get started. And uh, I have my sticks here already named with the name of the seeds on it and the date that I'm planting them. So what I'm starting out with is Celebrity. I've grown Celebrity many times and Celebrity does great. It produces a lot of tomatoes. And they're nice size. So the first thing I do this is all wet you've already got this your uh sea starting mix just right pretty much you know you want to make sure that you keep watering it so all the way down this cell it is moist and then you just go through and you take and put little indentions you don't do it too deep because i believe these seeds won't go but like one fourth inch but once you water this then know that the sea starting mix is going to move in surrounding that seed but I like to make a little indentions. I like to put two seeds in every cell. Two seeds. Then that way, one don't come up, the other one will. Now I have to say, Haas tool seeds, they do uh, germinate and they germinate fast. Um, you could really get by off of just putting one seed in it when it comes to Haas tool seeds. Other seeds, you know, I always put, and that was, you know, just the way I do it. Sometimes it depends on where I got the seeds. I might put three or four into it. But when the tomatoes grow up and say you just want one tomato into that um, cell there, you just take a pair of scissors and nip it the one that you don't want. Uh, if you let it grow up, you can pull those roots apart. Just know it's going to be a little transplant shot. So, two seeds. I'm going to start going with one because I, I really... You know, I'm planting a lot of tomatoes for one thing. And so far, I've had a really good success rate when it comes to house tool seeds. That one got two. I'm trying to get one. That one got two. So I'm just going to do um, three cells. I'm trying to get three cells. And I hate cutting. Honestly, I hate cutting little... I hate cutting a plant. I hate throwing it away but then you get where this is what you got to do so one cell i mean one seed in the cell but like i said when you're starting out definitely put two or three seeds in it and then cut out the one you don't want so my next step would be that i'm going to take some of the seed starting mix that is moist and i'm just I'm just lightly covering it. I'm not packing it down. I'm just kind of lightly covering it, spreading it into the cell. You want this sea starting mix or whatever soil you use, you want to make good impact. I don't remember how many seeds I planted.
So leave me a comment if you know if I planned a three or four sales. Tell me. Tell me if I messed up here. I think I planned a three, but tell me. So I'm so busy talking. So the next step here. So usually what I do is I just go ahead and fill up all my cells and then I'm going to water. But you, I like to go ahead and put my, my name of my tomato in there or plant. I'm going three cells over because I think I did three, three put cells, uh, seeds in three cells. And most time that's it. I'll water it and keep it watered. Of course, the rest of them the cells will fit up. But I'm also starting to put some perlite into this. I don't want too much because I've already got that seed starting mix. But uh, this helps with uh, retaining moisture. And since this sea starting mix has been um, already, you know, pre-moist, it's, it's right, it's ready for planting. And you see me patting it because you want that, those seeds to make good contact with that soil, that sea starting mix. And usually the water is going to pack it down some anyhow, especially as time goes on. And that's it. Then... Say, for instance, all these are filled up with seeds. Then I would take my saran wrap or six mil plastic or some kind of plastic and I lay it over the top of it. And I like to use saran wrap because I can kind of wrap it around the sides. And that way it's holding this moisture in. It creates the germination. I have a better germination and it starts getting these seeds going. Leave me a comment. Let me know if you're going to try this. If you're going to start growing your own transplants, your own little seedlings. Stop spending so much money out there throwing it away, a plant that's not that good. It's not going to give you the greatest harvest. So drop me a comment. Or if you do already do this, what is your technique? Share your ways so that others can read the comments and learn from that. Because like I said, you know, you got to start this. You got to, you got to find your little niche on what works good for you. Like, for example, um, the, the tray that goes to the bottom of this. Last year... No, it's fall. Fall, I took and put seed starting mix in there, sprinkled my little seed, onion seeds in there, sprinkled some of this on top of it, watered it, put some perlite on top of it, make sure it stayed moist, and I that's where the onions came from. And so that's why I love putting uh, saran wrap on the top of, of whatever I'm growing. Or maybe you have a smaller um, tray, cell tray, and it has a dome. Whichever way, you know, you just got to find a way that works for you. But whatever way it is, don't be intimidated. It's very easy. And you will not believe how much money you have saved. Well, guys, if you learn anything from these tips here, um, if you got any comments, leave a comment below. But definitely leave me a comment and, and tell me, have you ever, have you ever grown, is this what you do? Is this what you do in your homestead? Do you grow your own plants? Or how much are the plants in your area? That's a good one. How much are the plants in your area right now? Remember guys, make it a great day. God bless you.